Hi, I am Anna. I come from www.ntvforex.com. The ADP Private Sector Estimate of Payrolls Analysis HTTP ntvforex.com News ID 6C30F993 2020 10:20 p.m. Outlook The ADP Private Sector Estimate of Payrolls was a lousy 428,000 when about 1 million was expected, following 212,00 revised the month before. This pours cold water on today's jobless claims and tomorrow's employment numbers. Markets are all too likely to shrug off both numbers, even though the lack of improvement in jobs employment should be nagging, or rather the failure of the improvement to be longer lasting. We also get the July trade balance, expected at $58 billion after $50.7 billion in June but a worse $59 billion forecast see the chart. Trade with China if it re-emerges as a campaign issue, does show some improvement if you squint a little. According to the Census Bureau, the deficit with China was $131.72 billion as of end June. It was $345.2 billion for all of 2019. Now that the US government deficit is expected to exceed GDP this year and hawks are circling and screeching, do we get revulsion against the dollar on the twin deficit theme? Maybe not. It was a convenient excuse last time but easily discarded when something else was going on, and this time we are under threat of modern monetary theory, which holds that deficits don't really matter so spend like there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow when you can run a merry-go-round of government purchases of its own debt. This is bizarre and ridiculous but not actually untrue, at least in the short run. In the longer run, the government will have developed its own cryptocurrency, although the connection between the deficit and crypto remains elusive to us. If anyone grasps it, please write. We keep losing sight of the idea that the progress of fighting the pandemic dictates upcoming economic data and that data fuels markets. While the pandemic stories are indirect, they still need to be consulted. We had thought only a few weeks ago that superior pandemic control in Europe would deliver superior economic data and thus a boost to the euro. Instead we got the pretense of the Fed's new policy, which is not new and not transparent, with policy to be decided at the last minute without rules and boundaries set ahead of time how long is some time for average inflation to be too high and what tools will be used which part of the yield curve will get attention and so on. But mindset and data still count in Europe, and the euro is still the currency benchmark we follow. Here we go have some actual fresh news, even if it's almost as vague as the Fed story. According to the FT top story today, the ECB really is worried about the euro getting too high. The chief economist comment that set off the correction was likely not offhand, after all. Several members of the ECB's governing council told the Financial Times that the euro's rise against the US dollar and many other currencies risks holding back the eurozone's economic recovery. The council meets next week to discuss monetary policy. The problem is that the Fed has already decided and so the market may interpret interest rates as being structurally higher in the euro area, which could lead to a further appreciation of the euro. Lane himself said if there are forces moving the euro dollar rate around, that feeds into our forecasts and that in turn does feed into our monetary policy setting. One of the three council members interviewed and no names given, of course has said some of the euro's strength stemmed from positive factors such as the EU's recent A750BN recovery fund and the Eurozone's stronger-than-expected rebound from the coronavirus pandemic. The euro was likely undervalued at the start of the latest move, so it's not a big deal, yet. What comes next first, the ECB is expected to cut the 2022 inflation forecast from 1.3% to 1.11.2% to reflect the deflationary impact of a stronger euro on the price of imports according to one analyst. This may goose the ECB to raise QE. The other option, going more negative from the current 0.50%, is probably not on the table. In normal times, we would expect governments to hold or at least plan to hold a summit devoted to central bank policy and currencies, that is, focused on FX and not as broad as G7 or G20. But Trump put an end to all that. He has repudiated all U.S. association with or leadership of international organizations, from NATO, 
the Paris Accord and Iran deal to the World Health Organization. We would really like to know whether Mr. Powell holds secret phone calls with Ms. Lagarde, but if he does, he's not telling Trump. The next G7 meeting was rescheduled for September back in the spring, but Trump said he intended to invite India and Russia after first scheduling it at Trump's Doral Hotel, the venue was switched to Camp David, but apparently Merkel said she wouldn't attend, ostensibly because of COVID-19 and as of today, we can't find a place or date. In early August Trump said he wanted to stick to September and Camp David, but Google as hard as we can, it's entirely possible there will be no G7 at all this month. Not that those FX summits were very good in terms of results. The Plaza Accord sought to weaken the dollar and worked all too well, whereupon the powers came up with the Louvre Accord to firm up the dollar and that went too far. The best book of all time about this subject is Paul Volcker's Changing Fortunes 1992 which is getting a little long in the tooth now but still reveals a lot about how personal relationships really do matter in supposedly cold-hearted international finance. That time Plaza Accord, Japan stood up and went along with a coordinated policy against its best interests and got a punch in the nose for its trouble. We don't have big men anymore like Volcker. Instead we have tiny men like Trump. Not that Biden is a big man but we can certainly expect G7 summits to resume if he wins the election. Bottom line, we are at a kind of stalemate in which the US is sticking it to the Eurozone and the Eurozone is scrambling to figure out a response to offset the rising Euro without annoying its author, whether that s Powell or Trump. It's not quite beggar thy neighbor, but it might as well be. France s Macron is striking back with fiscal measures. At the opposite end of the scale, the Bundesbank says the minute the pandemic is gone, so goes QE and anything else even remotely resembling stimulus. It remains to be seen what Lagarde and the ECB Council will come up with. Next week will be interesting. Note to readers a week from today on Monday, September 7, the US holds the Labor Day holiday and all markets are closed. Many will take Friday off to enlarge the long weekend, including us. We will not publish reports on Friday or Monday. This is an excerpt from A. The Rockefeller Morning Briefing A which is far larger about 10 pages. The briefing has been published every day for over 25 years and represents experienced analysis and insight. The report offers deep background and is not intended to guide FX trading. Rockefeller produces other reports in spot and futures for trading purposes. To get a two-week trial of the full reports plus trader's advice for only $3.95. Click here. Subscribe our channel to receive the news as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. If you want to read real-time news, text messages to MT5 Expert Advisors page at https://mt5.expert.advisors.